We haven't covered much in the way of details for footwear and such, so today we're going to cover how to sculpt boots. Hey there, my name is Tom Mason and welcome to the Mini Sculpting Super Show. This is a place where you can come to learn everything you need to know to realize your dream of becoming a miniature sculptor. Well today we are going to learn how to sculpt some accessories for the feet, namely boots. Well unless you plan on sculpting all your miniatures barefoot, you're going to need to know how to sculpt some footwear. So let me take you on this journey and show you a little tutorial of how to sculpt some boots for your miniatures. The Mini Sculpting Super Show is powered in part by Sculptomo Toys. See everything they have to offer at SculptomoToys.com. So when you start sculpting your boots, you're going to want to make sure you have a good, decent base started. You don't want it to be too bulky though. You don't want the feet to be too large because if you do, that will kind of cut in to your ability uh, to, to add in folds and details and stuff depend and wrinkles depending on um, you know the kind of, of footwear you're doing. In this case with the boot I had a, I had a general shape, kind of wedge shape of the foot but I noticed, and you notice that I did uh, the musculature on the leg that was all uh, complete and ready to go and that that was there because I wanted to have a good end point and I wanted to have that all solved on the leg before adding the boot. That kind of helps inform the, the general shape that the character, the miniature will be in when going forward. But I left the ankle very, very thin, and that's just like I said, so that I would have room to do the uh, different folds and, and wrinkles and whatnot. So when you're doing the boots, or f you want to take a large amount of, of putty or poly clay. In this case, I happen to be sculpting this in, in putty, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it right now. But um, this whole figure was sculpted out of uh, Procreate. So I took a large amount of putty and I slowly add, I added little bits on at a time. If you want, you can throw on a whole blob in the whole area, but I like to do it in kind of sections. That way I can more easily define the foot and then the ankle area and then the upper part of the boots. And once you get that all on there into kind of a very general shape, you need to start you know, massaging it into its general form. Uh, you know, I would take my scalpel and trim it away a bit on the bottom to kind of create the, the general form of the sole of the boot. And then using the, my burnishing tool, I would go up and kind of massage the rest of it into a nice smooth shape, making sure all the parts were nicely blended together. Now, one thing I'm doing a little bit different with these boots than you might with uh, kind of more general boots you pull on. I'm making, this guy's a barbarian, so I want him to have kind of those uh, maybe more thrown together sort of footwear where, where they're, they're, they're not as nicely crafted and they're just kind of maybe loose pieces of, of leather or cloth that are being held together, bound together with various straps. So in this case, this is, it's almost like, think of it as he's basically got maybe a bag that he slipped over his foot. Maybe it's got um, some sort of um, padding in the foot and whatnot, just to you know make it a little bit more substantial, or, or maybe it's even a harder type of letter. But for the rest of it, it's really just kind of a loose element that's pulled up on there. So what I did is I took one of my small burnishing tools and I, and I just kind of pressed, they're very rounded, took the edge of it, and I kind of pressed in around to kind of give, insinuate the tracks that a leather strap would follow around the foot. Now as you start to add and refine a lot, some of these details, it's still very rough. But as you do it, you need to go, you want to make sure you go back to the bottom foot and, and the rest of the boot and just take stock of how everything's looking and you know don't be afraid to amend the shape you know as things go along you'll realize that well maybe the 
the bottom, I realized the bottom of the boot of the foot was a little too large. So I trimmed off a little bit and I wanted to kind of define the shape more. Uh, when you're adding boots, you obviously need to keep in mind the shape of the foot that it'll generally have. But when you're wearing boots or, or footwear of any kind, that adds a bit of a unique shape. You have maybe some parts of uh, towards the front that might curl up depending on how the, the, the sole of the shoe or boot is formed and things like that. So and obviously you're not going to see the toes. So I wanted to kind of give a much more hard defined look. So I, that's why I ended up just kind of trimming that into shape. Now for these straps, now it's been a little while since I started sculpting these boots and so the putty set up a bit after I got the general shape. Now I'm taking my scalpel and I'm going into those areas that I kind of pressed in recesses with. I'm just going back in with my scalpel and I'm pressing along on either side of those rounded indentions and what immediately happens is you you it looks like you have straps. Even I didn't have to lay down any extra putty or anything. I just took a very sharp tool, scalpel or an exacto blade and cut in those edges. Then I go back in with the same kind of rounded, small rounded, it could be a needle, things like that tool, and I just press in just a little more just to help refine and maybe flatten those straps a bit more and or even make them a little bit more uh, concave so that they look a little bit more like straps. Because sometimes when you press in with a, a, a tool on either side, you can end up making it rounded, more convex shape. And, and that's not a very natural or realistic way that the straps would look. They would tend to be pulled down tighter towards the middle and the uh, edges would end up curling out out away from the boot more. So from here I'm just going through and kind of refining some of those edges, some of the uh, parts of the boot that weren't quite the right shape, weren't quite the right shape or uh, got a little rounded just you know gently touching them with my clay shaper or large burnishing tool and just trying to uh, make sure the shapes are nice and defined. You know when you work with putty especially more than polyclay stuff tends to get very rounded very easily it's a very gummy material and so it's a good idea to just go back and refine those shapes as you go along. Now the, one of the last little things I start to do on the boots is, is after you've really got the shape down, you've got some other details, that's when you go in and start to add more of the wrinkles and elements. And so I took you know, kind of a, a needle tool. It has a rounded hook. That's just to help me get into special angles. But I took that and just pressed it in to little uh, areas on the top of the foot just to kind of show that the foot you know, is kind of pressing down on the toes and maybe the back of the foot is coming up just a touch. And you know there would end up being a little bit of uh, creases and wrinkles going on there. You would want to do similar things around the ankles and maybe even a little higher up on the calf depending on uh, how the materials laying on the on the leg. And I think I ended up having to add just a little bit more material on there because it looked a little bit too uh, too small. And once again, going back, just refining those those straps. Just to get a nice, clean, smooth area. Now I should point out that while you're sculpting with putty, if you're using lubricant, you need to be very careful with it. Don't use too much. It's very easy to want to use a lot of Vaseline or saliva or water, but by doing so, it can make it hard to adhere additional putty if necessary. And it takes some practice, but as you can see, if you if you do it right and are careful, you can actually add more putty on while you're still sculpting. Oops, there we go, back on the camera. Because the foot was looking just a little too flat there, so I was just adding on a few more elements just to really refine and uh, define the wrinkles. And you can see I'm putting in a little bit more wrinkles there up towards the top where the material would kind of tuck in to the straps. 
And then I'm flattening out that top piece because in my mind, when I made these boots, you know, like I said, it's almost like a leather bag he's just got on his foot. Well, the top part would just be the opening and it's kind of flopping down and over the straps um, as it's just kind of loosely falling and, and nothing's really holding that part of the boot in place. Now I wanted to give one other tip uh, when you're sculpting boots, and and this goes with a lot of elements, but I find it especially important with this. As you can see, I, f I completely finished the other the one boot. It's totally sculpted, all done. And the reason I did that is when you're sculpting with putty, a lot of times when you're giving a lot of attention to one area, putty the putty will cure it'll set up and if you're working in one area and spending a lot of time there you, but you put down putty say on both boots at the same time well one might set up more than the other before you get a chance to get back to it now you can you can go to both and focus on both but it takes a lot more uh, a little bit more discipline to make sure that you're you're not dilly dallying and and taking your sweet time so my point is <laughs> If you're working with, with clay especially, I would suggest build, taking an amount of putty or clay that, and, and breaking, taking a large amount and breaking it in half so you would have an equal amount and apply that to both feet at the same time. And what that'll do is that'll help you make sure that you keep the, the feet the same size a lot easier because you have the same amount of material you're working with at the same time. When you work on one boot at a time, there's you know you'd have to do a lot more checking back and forth and you're not even necessarily going to grab a similar amount of putty and when I would sculpt back in my early days it was so difficult to make symmetrical objects like feet and boots match it was very easy to get them um, have them disproportionate to each other so that is a a big tip that I would give anyone who is sculpting boots especially because it just it's very it's very easy to to overdo them and whatnot so try and apply that material at the same time if you if you can well that's it for sculpting boots I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some new techniques to help you in your sculpting if you have any other thoughts or ideas on how you would do boots or uh, questions feel free to comment below like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more if you'd like to help support the show or my work, head on over to Patreon and you can find lots of more perks and tips and things like that to uh, help you become a better sculptor. Alright, thanks again and keep sculpting!